Welcome everyone to Mac Aldridge Stadium in Fall River, where today the New Bedford High School Whalers take on the Durfee High Hilltoppers. It's high school football action on Thanksgiving Day from Mac Aldridge Field in Fall River. I'm Joe Cabral being joined today by Zach Rocha. The 115th meeting between New Bedford and Durfee. Zach? Well, it's always a classic matchup on Thanksgiving. These are the biggest rivalry in this area is New Bedford and Durfee, and there's even more riding on the line today. A win from New Bedford, and they go to the Super Bowl barring a Brockton loss. A win by Durfee, and they go to the Super Bowl barring a Brockton loss. So a lot of things on the line today, not just the rivalry. Yes, Zach, you mentioned it is a big game today and lots of big football action here on Thanksgiving Day. We'll be endeavoring to do our best to keep track of the Waltham Brockton contest. As you mentioned, if Brockton, if Brockton were to lose, one of the teams here today, the winner, will go on to the Super Bowl. So it's a big game not only for New Bedford, but also for Durfee High. And we are joined today by Fall River Educational TV. They're picking up the broadcast courtesy of New Bedford Cable Access. So we'd like to thank uh, New Bedford Cable Access for providing the feed to Fall River Ed Educational TV and them joining us here today. So Zach, uh, put your red and whites away for the day. <laughs> Throw some black in there and red a little bit as we do the game today between New Bedford High and Durfee. Some contrasting styles here today. Durfee will endeavor to keep the ball on the ground, Zach, using Cedric Carvalho, their key running back, as they just endeavor to pound the ball throughout the contest here on Thanksgiving Day. New Bedford, meanwhile, likes to mix it up on offense. They like to use the run and the pass from a top flight quarterback in Ryan Walsh. Ryan Walsh, the state leader in touchdown tosses. Coach Wayne Hamlet uses him as best as he can, uses that rifle arm of his. Plus, they have junior Tom Simmons in the backfield. Tom ran for over 800 yards this year, and he missed two games with concussions. So Tom has the firepower to combat with Cedric Caval, who rushed for over 1,000 yards for Durfee. Both of these teams know how to play, and they know how to win. It's just a matter of who wants it more today. Okay, Zach, we're waiting for the coin toss at the 50-yard line. And Durfee has won the toss. They will receive, and you can hear a large crowd in attendance here today from Mac Aldridge Field. We're on the Durfee side of the field because that's where the press box is located, and there are a lot of Durfee Hilltopper fans here today. In fact, New Bedford is well represented as well, Zach. Oh, they are as well. On the other side of the field, only a small section of the stands is empty. These guys travel all the way at 10 to support their whalers. There should be a great contest. A lot of rivalry, a lot of passion will be involved on this field today. In the aftermath of the September 11th uh, horror that has happened in the world, I think we should ask for a moment of silence. There we see the New Bedford contingent here today. To our men and women in the armed forces. And we're just moments away from our national anthem. And we thank you. A moment of silence in honor of those who lost their life back on September 11th. Here is our national anthem. anthem as performed by the Durfee Hilltopper Band. And we are just moments away from exciting Thanksgiving Day high school football action. Let's take a look now at the playoff picture as 
The big three is a conference wide open up for grabs. We see Brockton today meeting Waltham. They need to win. If they do win, they advance and become the big three representative. However, if they were to lose and New Bedford were to win or tie Durfee, New Bedford becomes the big three representative to the Super Bowl. And then, of course, if Brockton loses and then, then Durfee were to win here today against the Whalers, they would be the representative. So all of the teams from the big three today with big games, needing wins, in the case of New Bedford, a win or a tie to advance if Brockton were to lose. What a difference three weeks makes, Joe. I mean, three weeks ago, New Bedford was 6-1, and one, one of the top 15 teams in the state. It looked like they were headed to the Super Bowl, no problem, representing the Big Three Conference. All of a sudden, they go up to Zavarian and then St. John's Prep, two top teams in the state. They lose both of them. Kind of had their confidence shot last week as they lost to Brockton 14-7, a game they really should have won. Allowed Brockton to win the Big Three, and now Brockton has a chance to go to the Super Bowl. Just a, a big difference over these last three weeks of the season for New Bedford. They need to turn around today because they do still have a chance at making it to the playoffs. Andrew Aldridge to kick off for the Whalers. And back to return the kick for New Bedford. Number 22, Cedric Carvalho. And number 20, Matt Lopes. A beautiful day here today at Mac Aldridge Field. Calm, just a little bit cooler than an average fall. Day. And there's a hard hit right from the start. Ramsey Clark delivering the blow with Tom Balistracci to number 30, Jamal Green. And Durfee will start off at their own 31-yard line. And I talked to Coach Wayne Hamlet before this morning's contest, Zach, and he said that he had to stop practice on two occasions this week because his team was hitting so hard they were going to kill each other. So we see some of that intensity carrying over to the first play of this morning's contest. Quarterback for Durfee is Pantoa. Pantoa with the handoff, giving it to number 22, Cedric Carvalho. Very little on the play, if anything. In fact, no gain. Sets up a second and 10 for the Hilltoppers from their own 31-yard line. First two names we mentioned today are Ramsey Clark for New Bedford and Cedric Cavallo for Durfee, the most important players in this game today. Yep. Just take a look at the Durfee offense. Angel Pantoja is the quarterback, and then you got Cavallo, Lopes, and Rigo in the backfield. The wide receiver, Jeff Arruda. The tight end is Jamal Green, and then the offensive line of Bill Nasser, Tom Ouellette, Nate Levesque, Kyle Martin, and Alan Valois. Split backs behind Pantoja. He's calling signals. In motion, it's Lopes. Pantoa with play action, rolling to his right, firing over the outstretched hands of Jamal Green. He was wide open down the right sideline. Some fine play action there by Pantoa as he faked the end around to Matt Lopes, then trying to find Green, but the pass was incomplete, overthrown. That sets up a third and ten for the Hilltoppers, Zach. As you said before, Joe, that Durfee likes to run the ball, and if they can use that play-action fake a, a few times in this ball game, they may catch New Bedford off guard and be able to get a big gain on a pass play. If, if Durfee can do it consistently and, and catch New Bedford off guard, it could be a key play today, the play-action fa fake. The eye set behind Pantoja. Lopes is offset to the left. Pantoja now rolling to his right. Looks, fires. The pass is incomplete. Intended for number 21, Jeff Arruda. And the Hilltoppers will be forced to punt. A fine job by the Whaler defense. Holding the Hilltoppers three and out. And that means New Bedford will have their first offensive possession of Thanksgiving Day 2001. And back to return the kick for the Whalers. It's Mark Balistracci and number 21, Ariston Aurora. To punt for Durfee, it's number 21, Jeff Arruda. Aruda, the kickoff, a wobbly kick, tumbling down toward the 40-yard line. Balistracci from New Bedford went at the ball initially, but then allowed it to hit the turf and roll. And it's down by Durfee. And number one, Brian Hudon, at the New Bedford 33-yard line. They'll have a first and 10 from the 32. Very important, New Bedford gets something going here on this opening drive. If they don't even find the end zone or a field goal, at least get some positive yardage here. These guys have been beaten up the last three weeks. Their offense has really struggled, only accounting for just over 20 points. They really need to get 
off to a great start here today if they want to continue and, and try and get their confidence level up for the rest of the game. The Balistrachi brothers are flanked wide left and right. Tom to the left, Mark to the right. The eyes set behind Walsh. There's play action. Ryan back to pass, looking, looking. Rolling to his right, finds Aurora at midfield. He's knocked out of bounds, but not until he has a Whaler first down. Ryan Walsh with some fine play action there, Zach. Holding the ball on his hip, then rolling to his right and finding Aurora. And the Whalers with a hurry up, and Coach Hamlet told me nothing of this, so he's keeping this under wraps. Hurry up offense, Walsh signaling to his wideouts the play. The eye set behind Ryan. There's the give right up the middle to Aurora. He's at the 45 of Durfee to the 44-yard line of the Hilltoppers, a gain of about six on the play. That sets up a second and four, and more hurry up from New Bedford. I think this is a really good idea by New Bedford to go into the hurry up offense. Ryan Walsh is arguably the best quarterback in the state. He knows how to get his players pumped up and knows how to run the two-minute drill. Start off the game, good idea if you ask me. There's a give to the tailback, Simmons off right tackle. Tom breaking a pair of tackles. Finally brought down by Ryan Valois, but not until he reaches the Hilltopper 41-yard line. A gain of about four on the play for Simmons. More hurry up from New Bedford. This is their fifth play of this opening series, and it's all been from the hurry-up offense. Walsh now rolling to his left, looking, looking. He sacked on the play. Walsh appeared to have tight end Stephen Yates open, but was looking deeper downfield. And the sack by number 30, Jamal Green, results in a loss of about five on the play, and that'll set up a third and 11, maybe a short 12 for New Bedford. Something Walsh ran into a little bit of trouble last week is finding open receivers. It, it, when, when the offensive line does not protect for him, Durfee penetrates, and then they have a good, they do a great job of covering in the secondary. That's going to kill New Bedford today if they cannot block for Walsh. Tom Balistrachi to the right, Mark to the left, Walsh straight back. Here comes the pressure up the middle. Ryan trying to avoid the sack, but he is sacked again. This time it's Adam Emmer back for the Hilltoppers doing the damage, bringing Walsh down back at his own 46-yard line, and the Whalers will be forced to punt. New Bedford offensive line just falling asleep on two consecutive plays after it looked like New Bedford had the right idea with the hurry-up offense. Now they have to punt the ball away, and what looked like a positive drive ends up being a negative one. So Ryan Walsh is back to punt for the high school. Back to return the kick for Durfee. It's number 22, Carvalho, and number 20, Lopes. Here's an end-over-end kick coming down toward Carvalho. He calls for a fair catch at the 20-yard line. And the Hilltoppers will have their second possession of the morning, Thanksgiving Day morning, from their own 20-yard line. Joe Cabral and Zach Rocha bringing you exciting high school football action on Thanksgiving Day on New Bedford Cable Access Sports and Fred TV, Fall River Educational Television. Now, I expect Durfee to go with a run here. They threw two pass plays on their opening drive, accounted for zero yards on three plays. So expect Caval to get a lot of handoffs on this drive. Pantoa is the quarterback. The tailback is Carvalho, and there is the gift to Carvalho. Straight up the middle, gain of one on the play. And the Bedford defense coming out strong here early today. That's the first yard they've given up offensively so far to the Hilltoppers. That's the New Bedford defense that has actually kind of changed things up. They have Ariston Aurora playing the outside linebacker position today, and Tom Bellastracci is the cornerback. As you take a look at the defense, Stephen Yates and Calvin Arbery are the defensive ends. Lee Chase and Jake Brum on the middle of that defensive line. Ryan McCann, Ramsey Clark, Dallas Smith. The linebackers, Tom Bellastracci, switched with Ariston Aurora just before the game at the cornerback position, and then Ryan Walsh and Mark Bellastracci, the other secondary players. Here's the pitch from Pantoja to Carvalho. He is brought down for a loss of about one on the play. That time, the Whalers number 32, Dallas Smith, with a tackle in the backfield. A loss of one, as I mentioned, to Carvalho. So now Durfee back to zero yardage so far here today on offense. And that'll set up a third and 10 for the Hilltoppers. And the New Bedford defense is swarming so far, Zach. They look really fired up today, and it's just a matter of can New Bedford keep up this intensity level all game long? They've come off three really tough games, as I said, and their defense may be a little weary. Hopefully they can keep up this the whole ball game, though. 
the Hilltoppers spending a lot of time in the huddle. And they're probably going to put the ball in the air here. Split backs behind Pantoja, who pitches instead, fakes the pitch, gives it straight up the middle to the fullback. A fumble on the play, and New Bedford is recovered. Number 52 for the Hilltoppers. That's Mark Rossi with the recovery as Matt Lopes was given the underneath handoff. And he fumbled as he approached the first down for Durfee. In fact, he had the first down, then fumbled when hit. And Rossi with the recovery. I believe on that play, Zach, I don't know if we have the replay. I think there was a direct snap there. It wasn't even a handoff. And there we see the fumble and the recovery by Rossi. Just a perfectly perfectly called play. I mean, it was executed well. He just lost the ball as he crossed the 10-yard marker and it results in a fumble. Tough loss for Durfee there on that second drive. There's the gift to Tom Simmons off right tackle. He's at the 20-yard line of the Hilltoppers. Down to the 17, he has a New Bedford first down. Tom Simmons weighing in at only 145 pounds, and I think that number might even be skewed a bit. So. <laughs> Tom Simmons, you'll ever see in the backfield for New Bedford, he's only 5'7", and as you said, 140, 145 pounds. And the kid's taken a few licks this year, but he keeps on ticking. You watch him hurdle over the defender there and then continue to push through and put his head down to get those extra two or three yards. The offset eye to the left, and Walsh running the option. There's the pitch to Simmons. He's at the 15, now the 10. Tom Simmons down the sideline, spinning close to the goal line. He's brought down inbounds at about the two, it looks like. So New Bedford will have a first and goal from the two-yard line. Fine run there by Tom Simmons, as the option was executed perfectly by Ryan Walsh. How the heck did he stay in bounds on that one? Spinning off a defender who was grabbing his ankles right on the sideline, and he actually gets three or four more yards again. It's those little things that Tom Simmons does that helps New Bedford to get wins this season, as you see. Now it's a special formation for New Bedford, the goal line offense. Ryan McCann and Ramsey Clark are going to be blocking for Ariston Aurora here. The power eye offset to the right, and there is the pitch to Aurora. Ariston struggling for yardage, but actually he'll be brought down for a loss of, it looks like, about one on the play. Nothing there for the Whalers, as they had the power eye offset to the right. And as you mentioned, Zach, Ramsey Clark and... Mark Rossi as the, uh, as the fullbacks, but nothing happening there on the pitch to Aurora. That'll set up a second and goal for New Bedford from about the three-yard line. Again, with the power eye to the right, Ariston is the lone tailback. Now they switch it to the left with Clark moving to the left of the formation. And Ryan Walsh says, that's not what we wanted, guys, so I'll call the timeout. Let's go to the sideline and discuss this. Durfee's defensive formation there really seemed to throw off Walsh after he gets stopped on the first drive on first and goal. Gets a little nervous as we saw in the last week's game. He kind of second-guessed himself on some passes against Brockton. Kind of second-guesses himself on this drive right here. New Bedford needs to punch the ball in and he knows that. And so if he's unsure of something, he'll switch it up and then if he has to, he'll call a timeout. A smart decision by Walsh, but again, he needs to, to stick by his guns and not second-guess himself that much. I think a good call there by Ryan as the formation was improperly set by the Whalers. Clark offset to the right instead of the left. Now he comes out with a power eye to the left. And let's see what the Whalers do here. I would bet play action and a pass to a fullback or a tight end. No, they give it to Aurora off left tackle. Ariston down to about the two yard line it looks like. Not much closer than that. A gain of about one on the play. So that sets up a third and goal from the two for New Bedford. And the Whalers send in their regular offensive spread into the huddle along with Mark Balistracci. New Bedford will probably go with the eye set, and here we see it. Tom Balistracci to the left, Mark way off to the right. Now Tom in motion. Ryan Walsh running the option, keeping the ball himself, and he's into the end zone for a touchdown. The Whalers ran the option to the right. Ryan Walsh with a fake to the fullback, Ariston Aurora, then keeping it himself and into the end zone from two yards out. So Ryan Walsh with the touchdown, and New Bedford has a six to nothing lead. It was a very important touchdown right there. New Bedford takes a 6-0 lead. Remember, they did not score one touchdown last year against Durfee, a 24-0 loss, so it's very important, and it's a big confidence booster for this Wales team to get in the end zone early. And to attempt the extra point, for New Bedford, it's Andrew Correa. His kick is up, and it is good. 
Andrew Correa connecting on the extra point. And the Whalers lead 7 to nothing. 3.45 remaining in this first quarter. Let's look at the replay here as Walsh runs the option to the right. Balistracci in motion. There's the fake to Aurora. Then Ryan keeps it, makes a quick decision, and plunges into the end zone from two yards out. And there you see the senior quarterback standing in at six feet, one inch, and 185 pounds. He's led the Whalers so far successfully on offense, and as a result, New Bedford leads seven to nothing. And the real key to that drive was for New Bedford was the two runs by Tom Simmons, 31 yards. He had a 16-yard run and then a 15-yard run, which got him down to that two-yard line and got him that first and goal, in which they finally scored on third and goal by the two-yard plunge by Walsh. So the Whalers to kick off. Back to return the kick again for Durfee. Number 20, Matt Lopes. He had the key fumble that resulted in the Whalers scoring drive of 32 yards. Andrew Eldridge to kick off for New Bedford. Ball tumbling down the middle of the field, a script kick. And Durfee will fall on it at the 21-yard line. Number 84, Kevin Burney. 34, check that. 34, Steve Pedro falling on the ball at the Durfee 21 yard line. So the Hilltoppers again with not the best of field positions, starting from their own 21 yard line. First and 10, their third offensive possession here today. Three minutes and 33 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. New Bedford with a 7 to nothing lead. Pantoja is the quarterback. Carvalho is the lone back. There is the gift to Carvalho. Straight up the middle, he plunges into the Whalers secondary. Brought down at about the 28-yard line of Durfee. Gain of seven on the play. That's the biggest offensive play so far here today for Durfee. That's the first positive yardage play of the day, actually, for Durfee. And they're on their third scoring drive. So you can tell just from that stat alone, the Hilltoppers are having a little trouble with their offense. Let's see how they react after scoring, after just being scored on. And a long three, short four for Durfee. To the left, it's Lopes. And there is the give right up the middle again to Carvalho. Not much on the play. As the Hilltoppers have tried to spread the formation on the last two plays, maybe a gain of one and some friendly exchanges already resulting here today. Number 99, Ron Hunt. Six foot three, 284 pound tackle for Durfee. Makes his way to the sideline after mixing it up with Ryan Walsh. As we said, Walsh is, is a fearless kid. He'll go after anybody, even a kid who's 6'3 and 284 pounds. We've seen him pop a few kids that have been bigger than him on the season, whether it be defensively or out of a scramble on the run offensively. Ryan Walsh is not going to back down from anybody today. That will not be a problem for him. And there is a timeout on the field. 2.22 left in the first quarter. The score, New Bedford 7, Durfee nothing from Mac Aldridge Field in New Bedford. Joe Cabral and Zach Rocha. As we look at a team comparison for the season, Zach. No, I mean, you, you can tell there, New Bedford's offense has been their key so far this season, and the defense hasn't been too shabby either. 20, over 20 points a game for New Bedford, but three weeks ago, that was over 28 points a game. They really were stalled those last three weeks, as we and they've been outscored on average by their opponents, yet they still stand at 5-5. Five and five. That's a testament to Steve Winoski knowing how to win the important games. So Durfee with a big third and three. And Pantoja calls for a timeout. As he got to the line of scrimmage, he was not happy with what he saw from the Whaler defense. So he calls for a timeout, goes to the sideline to meet with head coach Steve Winarski. Well, I think was the problem there was, was Pantoja was looking for Re Scott Rigo as fullback, and Rigo wasn't on the field. Rigo was being held up by Winoski. It seems as if Pantoja didn't know what to do, and now you see Rigo going to the huddle there. Cost him two timeouts. Fortunately for Durfee, it's the first half. But still, you don't like to use two timeouts that close together at any time in the ballgame. Power eye set to the right for the Hilltoppers. 
There is the give to the tailback, Carvalho. He, as he reaches the 30-yard line, but he appears to be short of the first down. Let's see where they mark it. They gave him a little bit more than I thought as they allowed him to cross the 30-yard line. So now he's had the ball marked at the 31. Gain of about three on the play for Carvalho. And now the chains are being called from the sideline. And I think they're going to end up with a first down. And they get it. That, that, that's a favorable ride. Right. Yeah, that's like a there, favorable Jim. spot, yeah. as you mentioned, Zach. And a first down for the Hilltoppers at the 31-yard line. Now, I know we're on for, for River Educational Television, so I need to watch myself. But I won't say anything more than I think it was a favorable lie. For those of you listening to Zach for the first time on Fred TV, Zach is a student at New Bedford High School. So sometimes his red and white bleed through quite clearly during these contests. But we'll have him under wraps as much as we can here today. Durfee with a first and 10. There is the gift to Lopes, sweeping to his left. He'll lose about three or four on the play. Number 46, Andrew Souza in on the tackle for New Bedford. And I think Durfee will have a hard time today trying to run wide against New Bedford with their speed. Well, it's, just been, it's just been very difficult for Durfee on their opening nine plays of the game so far today. They have yet to get over 10 yards. That was their first first down, and they're on their third drive. Durfee's offense has just been completely halted by New Bedford's terrorizing defense. I mean, this is a defense that's only allowed 13 points a game over the course of the season, and most of those touchdowns came in the last three weeks. Second and 14 for Durfee. They have the ball back at their own 28-yard line. The lone back is Rigo in motion, it's Lopes. There's a double reverse, a gift to Carvalho. He crosses the 30-yard line, makes it to about the 32. He gets back the loss from first down and one more, so that'll set up a third and nine for Durfee. There we saw an intriguing play. We had Lopes in motion, the give from Pantoja to Lopes, who then in turn gave it back, going the other way to Carvalho. A double reverse, but not the traditional way in which it's done. The second handoff was an underneath handoff, and the Whalers were on top of it, however, stopping Carvalho for a gain of about three. Panto is a senior. He knows how to do those little fake handoffs, the little confusing plays very well, as we saw him do it before on the first drive, Lopes, before he fumbled the ball. Pantoja now rolling to his right, looks as he sacked, throws the ball up for grabs, and there'll be a flag on the play. Mark Balistracci made the cardinal mistake of a cornerback as he did not turn to look for the ball. Instead, he face guarded number 21, Jeff Arruda. The ball was well underthrown. It could have easily been picked off, but Balistracci did not turn back to look for the ball. And so when he made contact with Arruda, there was a penalty for pass interference, and it will be a Durfee high first down. Exactly right, Joey. Mark Belichacci made the Cardinal son of any defender, did not turn around at all, got his hands all over Rudy. As you see, Pantoa, pressured by Ernesto Aurora, throws the ball up for grabs as it was a third down and nine. He had to. And Belichacci does not put his hands down, keeps him up, and that's why they call that flag. They throw that flag, I should say. High school football, as it is in college, it's not penalty where the ball is marked at the spot of the foul. As we look again at the large crowd here today at Mac Aldridge Field. And it is a beautiful day for football. We've done a few of these games, Zach, where it's anything but beautiful. But today it is a wonderful day for football. It's a little early in the morning for my liking, but that's okay. It's, it's nice out. To the left is Lopes, and the lone back is Carvalho. There is the gift to Carvalho, straight up the middle. Gain of about seven again on the play for Carvalho. And when the Hilltoppers have spread the field, they've had a little more success on the ground. And there Carvalho picks up about seven as the first quarter comes to a close. So with one quarter of play in the books today, on Thanksgiving Day from Mac Aldridge Field in Fall River. It's the New Bedford High Whalers 7, the Durfee High Hilltoppers nothing. 
So a, a lot of things working in New Bedford's favor in this first quarter. They lead Durfee 7-0, and I've gotten word that Waltham is leading Brockton 9-6 over in Brockton right now. Very good, Zach. So again, repeat that score for our viewers today. It is 9-6. Waltham leads Brockton at the end of the first quarter. They had just signed the second quarter, and New Bedford leads 7-0. So two things working in favor of the red and white today so far after only uh, 11 minutes of play. Zach with his bowls out at Brockton, bringing in this key information. The second quarter is about to start. The Whalers leading seven to nothing. Durfee with the ball at the Whaler 47 yard line, their deepest penetration. In fact, their first possession, this side of the 50. So they'll have a second and a short three. Now, Sergio Cavallo's been kept under wraps so far today. Eight carries, 19 yards in that first quarter, but with that last seven-yard carry, he went over 1,000 yards on the season. That's from David, our crack statistician. Back to pass Pantoja now, scrambling, rolling to his left. He's going to keep it down the sideline at the 40. 35-yard line of New Bedford. He's hammered out of bounds, but not until he has another Hilltopper first down. Pantoja dropped straight back, but made a quick decision to scramble to his left. And he has the third Durfee first down of this morning's contest. Great run by Pantoja. He's a senior as well as Ryan Walsh, two of the top quarterbacks in this area. Pantoja using his legs on that play instead of his arm to get the first down. A nice play by the senior quarterback. Standing in at six feet, 205 pounds. So for his height, he has quite a bit of weight behind him and doing a fine job there on the ground. First and 10 for Durfee at the New Bedford 35-yard line. The lone back is Carvalho, straight up the middle. Short gain on the play. Mark Rossi in on the tackle for the Whalers, along with number 75, Lee Chase. Gain of three for Carvalho, and second, and make it four actually, second and six for Durfee. Now these next two plays are very important for both of these teams right now, especially Durfee. They've gotten the ball past midfield for the first time today. We're in the second quarter. It would be really nice for the Hilltoppers if they could get it a little bit further up the field, possibly get a field goal, if not the touchdown. New Bedford's defense has to stop them right here. This is a, a very important next two plays. Another timeout signaled for by the Hilltoppers. Their third timeout used here in the first half with 9.46 remaining in the second quarter. Durfee on the move at the Whaler 32-yard line with a second and six. Let's take a look at the Durfee sideline, Zach. Yeah, you see Steve Winoski has got a five and five record so far this season for Durfee as he's giving out instructions to his Hilltop. As, as I said, these are very two, very important two plays. Winoski wants to make sure Pantoja and the rest of the Hilltopper offense is on the same page as him for these next two plays. Joe Cabral and Zach Rocha bringing you high school football action today on New Bedford Cable Access TV and Fred TV in Fall River. And there we see the New Bedford High sideline and head coach Wayne Hamlet. Wayne loved the weather here today. Perfect day for football. And so far we've seen some exciting play. Second and six for Durfee from the New Bedford 32-yard line. There's the cross buck to give to number 20, Lopes. Not too much for Matt on the play. Last time Durfee, Durfee made that, that call and ran that play, they got over 10 yards, but Lopes fumbled the ball. This time he holds on to it, and the New Bedford defense was not fooled, only allowing two yards on that play and setting up a pivotal third and five here on the 30-yard line of New Bedford. Kind of a wing T formation by Durfee, but not exactly the traditional style. But they do like to give the ball on the cross buck or the counter action to Lopes. There, a short gain on the play. That sets up a third and five for Durfee from the 30-yard line of the Whalers. Pantoja, the draw play to Carvalho. He breaks a tackle. He has a first down for Durfee. Number 12, breaking a tackle in the backfield. 
and then pulling his way across the 25-yard line of New Bedford. He has the fourth Durfee first down of this first half. Another great individual run by Caval. Last three carries, he's got 17 yards after being shut down to under 15 on his first seven carries. He, he That was all his run there as Ryan McCann was blitzing for New Bedford. Could not get him. Caval broke that tackle, went a few more yards further and got the first down. And Durfee is knocking on the Whalers' doorstep right now. I set behind Pantoja. Cavallo is the tailback. There's the underneath handoff to the fullback, Rigo. He picks up about four on the play. Down to the Whaler 21-yard line. It'll make it second and six for Durfee. And they are on the move now, Zach, with the ball on the ground. Yeah, they're doing exactly what Wanaski wants them to do. They're containing the tie of possession while still moving the ball to the field. This drive is now almost five minutes long, and Durfee has been running the ball consistently this whole drive. Only one pass play thrown, and that was the big penalty in which Mark Belastracci was called for pass interference on third and nine, which extended this drive. Lopes is flanked wide to the right. Number 21, Aruda to the left. The eye set. And there's the option being run to the right. Pantoja with a pitch to Carvalho, and he's tripped up on the play in the backfield by number 12, Mark Balistrachi. Yes. Mark read the play perfectly, Zach, and just shot right into the backfield to trip up Carvalho. We've seen Mark do it so many times this year, come up from his cornerback position and hit the guy in the backfield, 6'1", 180-pound senior. He's on his third year on Vasti. Last year, he caught six touchdown passes and one, no, caught five touchdown passes in one game. Ryan Walsh threw six. That was the glimmer of hope New Bedford used to carry into this season. After they went 2-8 last year, they stood at 6-1 and one three weeks ago. Kind of hit a skid, but they still have a chance at the playoffs today if they can continue to stop Durfee's offense. And you mentioned Brockton losing to Waltham, 9-6 to six early in that contest. The Whalers blitzing right up the middle. The screen is set up for Carvalho down the left sideline. And what a fine play by the other Balistracci brother. This time it's coming up from the secondary to make the tackle on Carvalho. It looked as if the screen was set up perfectly. But he is brought down short of the first down. Picks up about five on the play. Tommy taking a few tips from big brother Mark that this is his first game this season at the cornerback position. He usually plays outside linebacker, but again, he reads that play perfectly and cuts down Durfee, who now has to use their fourth time out of the half, and they have fourth and four coming up. There we see the Whaler marching band. Seated across the way here at Mac Aldridge Field, and there are the fans from New Bedford in attendance here today. A fine crowd, and virtually filling up the entire visitors' side of the bleachers here today in Fall River. The last meeting, of course, went to Durfee, 24 to nothing, on Thanksgiving Day 2000, and it had been a long time since the Hilltoppers had won a game against New Bedford on Thanksgiving Day, 16 years until they pulled off that win in 2000. That's actually Durfee's first Super Bowl berth in, in almost a decade uh, with that victory as well as they went on to the Super Bowl in Division 1A and played BC High, but they fell 35-0, but it was still a successful season, one of the most successful seasons under Coach Steve Wynoski's, uh well, he's been the head coach over here at Durfee. Hilltoppers with a big fourth and four from the New Bedford 19-yard line. They need to get down inside the 15 of the Whalers to get a first down. They're bringing, they're bringing in their big tight end, number 50, Jeremy Raposo, six feet four, two, 327 pounds. But there were flags on the play prior to prior to there even being a call. Illegal substitution called on Durfee, and I think it was Raposo coming onto the field late. You can't do that. You can't deceive the defense by making a substitution or bringing in a player late. You have to show them what you have offensively so they can make their defensive substitutions. And there we see Raposo coming on late. The Hilltoppers are flagged for legal substitution, a five-yard penalty, and that means it's a fourth and nine instead of a fourth and four. 
And that's, this changes Durfee's whole strategy on how to attack on this play. It's, it looked like it was going to be a run there. They bring in Reposer as the, the extra blocker. Instead, they're probably going to have to go to the air here, a thing Durfee does not like to do that much. They're going to blow another timeout here. I believe they're out of them. Durfee now. with another timeout. Their fifth timeout, and of course their final timeout here of the first half. As Dave, our crack statistician, nods, saying, yes, I have that. We'll try to give Dave some camera time a little bit later on today. Second thought, no. <laughs> but Dave is here to encourage us and to give us all of the crack information that we have. Let's take a look at that illegal substitution. We see the Hilltoppers coming from the sideline, and there's Pantoja. And then all of a sudden, you'll see number 50 run into the picture after the rest of the team had gotten ready and had their formation pretty much in, pretty much set at the line of scrimmage. There Here he is. comes, and that's illegal substitution. Fourth and nine as a result for Durfee from the New Bedford 24-yard line. Green is the tight end to the right. Split backs behind Pantoja, who rolls to his right, looks, fires deep toward the end zone. The pass is incomplete, intended for number 21, Jeff Arruda. And there is another flag on the play, and there was some contact involving Mark Balistracci and Arruda. Let's see what the call is. If it's against New Bedford, either holding or pass interference, it will be a first down, Zach. Yeah, it will be. I think it may be, in fact, about pass interference on Bellastracci. I think the, the question in the referee's mind is... No, the New Bedford players are... Oh, excited and run to the sideline as the call ends up being an eligible man downfield. One of the Durfee linemen had crossed the line of scrimmage. And let's see if we have that. Okay, technical difficulties. We thought it might have been pass interference on Balistracci again. He, he made slight contact at the end, but it didn't look like it was a catchable ball. So uh, a good decision by the referees. Plus, it was a legal man downfield for Durfee. Penalties just killed him on that drive there. The Whalers with the eye set, leading 7 to nothing. There is a give right up the middle to Simmons. He cuts it back against the grain. Now at the 40-yard line, 45, bumped out of bounds. Fine run by Tom Simmons. Tom Simmons with a gain of about 20 on the play. Gain of 22 on the play by Tom Simmons, who cut that one back against the grain. And early in the year, let's take a look at the Simmons run. And the, and the key to this run is he switches hands right there as the Durfee defender tried to strip him. A very, very smart play by the junior running back who has just played a, a remarkable role on this team this year. The eye set behind Walsh. There is the gift to Simmons off right tackle. Tom Simmons into the secondary, close to another whale of first down. Nine-yard gain on the play, brought down by... Number 29, Foley Alley for Durfee. But a big gain of nine for Tom Simmons. And early in the year, the Whalers were hesitant to run Tom Simmons inside the tackles. They tried to run him exclusively to the outside. But now we see him running well between the tackles. In fact, I think he's running better inside than outside. In motion, it's Tom Balistracci. Here is a pitch to Simmons. Now to the outside on the right. Simmons right down the sideline. He's at the 30, 25 yard line of Durfee, 20. And he's pushed out of bounds close to the 15 yard line. In fact, inside the 15 yard line. He's marked at the 13, but there is a flag on the play. Let's see what the officials have called here. A gain of 32 by Simmons will be erased. A holding penalty called against New Bedford High. Now let's take a look at the replay. Maybe we can pick up the hold. There's the pitch to Simmons to the right side, and he just goes straight down that right sideline. It was There's on a, a roll. Flag. It was on a roll at the top of your screen there. He, he had held the man and threw him to the ground instead of just cleanly blocking him. That was a little bit of a problem. You see a cameraman, Dave Farina, waving. Here's our crack cameraman wishing you a happy Thanksgiving. Dave hasn't missed too many turkey days in his life. 
He's looking forward to some good home cooking. Second and long for New Bedford. Swing pass to Balistrachi. Tom down the sideline at the 50, 45 yard line. 40 of Durfee still on his feet. Knocked out of bounds at the 37 yard line. A fine run by Tom Balistrachi. It was a, a three wide receiver formation trips to the left in New Bedford. For the first time they run it today, they brought Corey Drafen in. And Corey Drafen made the key block at the end there, which allowed uh, uh, Bell Strachey to get those extra five yards. But it appeared as if Tom thought he was out of bounds towards the end of the play. And he, he, I think he was expecting a late hit call since he got hit, but he, his feet were still in bounds. He did not realize it. Tom doing the Texas two-step down the sideline and has a New Bedford first down. Here's a pitch to Simmons to the right. Simmons at the 30-yard line. Inside the 30-yard line of Durfee. And did you see who, who, who Simmons' lead blocker was on that play? Ryan Walsh makes the pitch, and then he goes up and makes the, the lead block, gets Simmons those six yards on that play. Unbelievable drive by this quarterback. As we said, he's just fearless. Gain of seven on the play by Tom Simmons. That was a play that the Whalers had run down the sideline for a gain of 32. It was called back by a penalty, but New Bedford going right back to it. Now the Whalers with... The lone back, Ariston Aurora. Simmons is flanked to the right. The Whalers running the option with Walsh keeping to the right. Down the sideline, Ryan Walsh taking a hit. Bumped out of bounds, close to the 25-yard line of Durfee. That would be a New Bedford first down if he's marked out at the 25-yard line. And it is indeed a Whaler first down. 4.24 remaining in this first half, Joe. I think if New Bedford can hold on to this ball a little bit long before they get the ball into the end zone, if they are to do that, then Durfee might not have enough time to, to march down the field and, and get a scoring drive. And New Bedford, a 14-0 lead at halftime, would be just an incredible confidence booster for this Whaler squad. Simmons is the tailback, Aurora the fullback. Counteraction fake by Waltz, looking, firing down the left sideline to Stephen Yates. The ball off of the hands of Yates. He was defended by Foley Alley on the play, and New Bedford was looking for the pass interference call, but none to come. Two things were the factor in Yates not making that catch there. The ball was kind of floated, as you see it here. Walsh is going to take the snap, and he's going to roll to his left. A, a classic play action fake from New Bedford. Throws a, a law pass instead of a, a, a bullet into Yates, and that allows Alley enough time to, to just knock that ball away at the last second. Now the eye set by the Whalers counter. Give it to Simmons. Right tackle. Tom breaks a tackle, but then is drilled at about the 17. Maybe a gain of one by Simmons. Number 75, Mike Pereira in on the tackle for Durfee. It was only the second carry today, under five yards for Tom Simmons today. That tells you how dominant the junior running back has been, just chewing up yards all over the place on this Durfee field. Third and nine from the 23-yard line. Third and nine for New Bedford. Back to pass, it's Walsh. Now rolling to his right, looking, looking, looking. He'll be sacked. Walsh is sacked back at the 32-yard line. He could not find a receiver, tried to buy some time, but was finally brought down by Nathan Levesque and number 54, Ryan Valois. Walsh tried to do too much on that play. He knew it was third down, so he knew he tried. He had to try and make a pass there. But again, he, he should have either turned it upfield or threw it away on, on that, that play and give New Bedford at least a chance at fourth down. Now they have a, a fourth down in about 18 or 20. And, Looks like they might be out of contention here at the uh, first down and a continuation of this drive. As you see, Walsh, he's rolling to his right here. Doesn't have anybody to throw to, so he stops, and his, his right foot just slips out from under him, and he cannot turn it back over to try and make a pass. New Bedford will call a timeout. As they got to the line of scrimmage, they did not like the defensive setup by the Hilltoppers. So New Bedford to the sideline to meet with there's Justin now, <laughs> our crack cameraman. He's practicing his Thanksgiving Day wave as we see the turkey going right under his hand. Try to catch him next time he goes by, Justin. 
<laughs> Dustin's a very serious young man. Standing there with the grim look on his face. So we've seen two of our fine cameramen. Dave's waiting to get on camera next, the crack statistician. Two minutes and 40 seconds left in this first half. New Bedford 7, Durfee nothing. The Whalers with the ball at the Durfee 32-yard line. That's the good news for Whaler fans. The bad news is it's fourth and about 20. Big play right here for Durfee. Their defense really needs to stop New Bedford on this play. If New Bedford gets a first down, they chew up some more clock time. Durfee's going to have worse field position. Important play here. Back to pass. Walsh looking. Durfee with a blitz. Here's the pass complete to Yates. Steven is brought down at about the 16-yard line. Well short of a first down. So Durfee will take over on downs. And it will be first and 10 for Durfee at the road 16-yard line. It was a play in which New Bedford wanted to use Stephen Yates' size to his advantage, try and get him the ball about 10 yards past the line of scrimmage and let him try and bull his way through there and try and get the first down. Unfortunately for him, though, the Durfee defense stopped him two yards short of the first down. 7 to nothing. New Bedford leading Durfee. Thanksgiving Day high school football action. The 115th meeting between these two teams. There is a gift to Carvalho, straight up the middle. He breaks it to the left side, off left tackle. Carvalho, close to the 30-yard line. He has a Durfee Hilltopper first down. Gain of 12 on the play. Memphis defense completely faked out by the, 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 the handoff there by Pantoa. They were expecting a play action fake, which Durfee has run a few times today. They didn't get that. Carvalho turned it past Ramsey Clark and got into the New Bedford secondary before finally being taken down. 12-yard gain for Carvalho, his longest of the day so far. Until that play, New Bedford's defense had shut him down pretty well. First and 10 for Durfee at the New Bedford, at the Durfee 28. Two minutes and four seconds left in the first half. No timeouts remaining for Durfee, remember, so they'll have to move the ball quickly down the field if they hope to get a score. They give right up the middle to Carvalho. Very short gain on the play. The clock is running, a minute 50. Somebody called for a timeout. The officials say New Bedford did. Durfee without a timeout. Maybe someone was injured for New Bedford. Ryan Walsh seems to be a little bit gimpy. I don't know why they would have called a timeout other than that, as Durfee did not have a way to stop the clock. Unless New Bedford feels that Durfee might just try to run the clock out here, and they'd like to get the ball back. Let's see. A minute 50, second and six. Short seven. There's the gift to Carvalho. He bumps into Pantoa, now takes it to the outside. Carvalho is dumped back at the 30-yard line. A gain, actually a loss in the play of three, and New Bedford is signaling for another timeout. That's exactly what they want to do, Zach. A minute 36 left. In the first half, New Bedford has signaled for another timeout. I believe they have one timeout remaining. So they'll be able to call one after third down if they'd like, and then force Durfee to punt. It's a good decision when looking back at it now, but that's a very risky decision at the time in which you call a timeout after Durfee has a very makeable second and six. Lucky, luckily for New Bedford, uh, Pantoja and Cavallo had a little bit of miscommunication problems in the backfield, and Durfee loses two yards. But otherwise, this is a very risky call, especially if Durfee gets a first down, and they're the ones who are now able to move the ball down the field. A loss of two on the play for Carvalho. As we take a look at the Whalers, now six and four on the season. Starting off six and one, they lone loss in the first seven games to Whitman Hansen. And then a bunch of L's. 21 to seven loss against St. John's Prep, a fine game that we did here on New Bedford Cable Access. A 22-12 loss to Zavarian. Then the 14 to seven loss to Brockton. 
to the BC High victory on September 21st. They were down 19-7 in the fourth quarter, scored 22 points, took a 29-19 victory out of there, have a five-game winning streak. Then they run to St. John's Prep at home, lose 21-7. Now they're on a three-game losing streak. Those are the two turning points in the season for New Bedford. Third and about eight for Durfee. There's the give to Carvalho on the draw. He'll be brought down after a gain of about two or three. New Bedford signals for a timeout. So with a minute 28, Durfee will have a fourth and about six. They will be forced to punt. And New Bedford will have an opportunity one final time here in the first half. Let's take a look at Durfee and what they did so far this season. Against Barnstable early in the season, their opener, they lost 35 to 8, then rattled off, a, uh, rattled off a couple of consecutive wins, first against Taunton and then against Falmouth. Then two losses in a row again, this time to Attleboro and Fian. A big win against Dartmouth, 20 to 6. Then a loss to Brockton. And then two wins in a row before last week's loss to Acton Boxborough, a 28 to nothing shutout. Now you see a lot of common opponents there between New Bedford and Durfee's schedule. The only difference in, in the results between these two teams is that New Bedford beat Alabaro and Durfee lost Alabaro. Otherwise, these two teams are pretty even against common opponents. Back to punt for Durfee. It's number 21, Jeff Arruda. And to return the kick for New Bedford, it's number 21, Ariston Aurora. And number 12, Mark Balistracci. Arruda's kick. Tumbling down toward Aurora. It takes a bounce past him. He picks it up at about the 15-yard line. Ariston to the right sideline. He is brought down right at the 15-yard line. Some dogged determination by the Hilltoppers at number 55, Alan Valois. Not allowing Ariston to get to the right sideline where the Whalers had the wall set up. Durfee special teams playing that to perfection. Jeff Arruda's kick, taking a Durfee bounce off the turf, and then number 55, Alan Valois getting in there, the sophomore on a rush, slowed him up, and that allowed Matt Lopes to make the tackle. Perfect play by Durfee special teams there. Hurts New Bedford on their final scoring drive. A minute and 11 remaining in the first half. New Bedford with a 17 to nothing lead. They have the ball at their own 16 yard line. Let's see if they gamble and try to do something here offensively. Not a lot of time. Back to pass, Walsh looking, firing to the sideline, complete. Mark Balistracci with a whale of first down. Steps out of bounds at about the 26 yard line. Just enough for New Bedford first down and the clock will stop with a minute and six seconds left. Good blocking there by New Bedford, the roll out by Walsh and then Lee Chase hitting Jamal Green just as McGreen was getting into the backfield and was attempting to hit Walsh. That allowed Walsh the extra second to make that pass to Belichacci who had no problem making the catch and getting out of bounds to stop this clock. Now Walsh rolls to his left. He throws well from here, finds Corey Drafen. He had the ball, then dropped it, picks it back up, but the officials say the pass is incomplete. Another good throw by Walsh rolling to his left. We've seen that many times here this season, but Drafen with a drop, second and 10 for New Bedford. Now, now the rule is Corey has to either has to maintain possession of the ball for over two seconds, or he has to make the catch and turn up field. He had made the catch, but just as he was about to turn up field, he dropped it, so that is an incomplete pass, a good call by these referees, and a lucky one for New Bedford, despite the fact Drafen did fall back on it. Second and 10 for New Bedford at the 26-yard line. The eye set behind Walsh. Now straight back for Ryan, looking, pump fake. Tries to avoid the sack, but he is unable to do so. Number 30, once again for Durfee, Jamal Green with his second sack of the morning. Walsh is brought down back inside the 20 yard line at about the 19. 37, 36 seconds as the clock is running. Expect New Bedford to kneel the ball here, I would imagine. Well, maybe they'll go long and deep. No, draw. Give it to Simmons. Left tackle. Tom avoids a tackle. Now trying to go back against the grain. Tom Simmons is brought down at about the 24-yard line. A fine effort by Tom Simmons. Short gain on the play. He'll be brought down short of the first down. And the clock is running. 9-8. It will count down here. And New Bedford will allow it to do so. Three, two, one. And that's the end of the first half. From Mac Aldridge Field in Fall River.
The score, New Bedford seven, Durfee nothing. Joe Cabral and Zach Rocha bringing you high school football action on Thanksgiving Day from Fall River. And you're watching the contest on either New Bedford Cable Access or Fall River Educational Television. We'd like to welcome once again all of the viewers today on Fred TV. Zach, it's been an exciting contest, an interesting one. And Durfee has hung right there with the Whalers all morning long thus far. Yeah, a lot, a lot of people didn't think Durfee, Durfee had the capability to stay with New Bedford, but they've shown that they can. They've only allowed one touchdown today, and that was a two-yard plunge by Walsh with 3.45 to go in the first quarter. Otherwise, these two defenses have really been doing a great job at stopping each other. Cedric Cavallo has not been able to get much done for Durfee running the ball, and Walsh has not been able to throw the ball as much as he'd like to. Just a, a good job by each team's defense. Okay, with the score seven to nothing, New Bedford over Durfee at the half. We'll pause for a moment or two and be back right after this. Welcome back to Mac Aldridge Field in Fall River. The second half of the traditional Thanksgiving Day contest between New Bedford High School and Durfee High about to come your way. Joe Cabral and Zach Rocha bringing you all of the action. And we see quickly, Zach, a scoring update at the half. Waltham 15, Brockton 13. And as we mentioned prior to the start of our contest, if Waltham were to upset Brockton, then the winner of today's game, as you see in the playoff picture, goes on to the Super Bowl. A Brockton loss and a New Bedford win or tie versus Durfee means they move on. A Brockton loss and a Durfee win means the Hilltoppers continue with their 2001 season. And then, of course, if Brockton is successful in their game versus Waltham and they win, it doesn't matter what happens here this morning. You see the captains at the 50-yard line. And let's take a quick look at what happened in the first half. Not too much offensively, but one touchdown. Here we see Ryan Walsh running the option from the two-yard line to cap a 32-yard scoring drive following a fumble by Matt Lopes. And New Bedford went up 7 to nothing with a successful point after touchdown. That touchdown drive at 345 of the first quarter. And the key player of that drive and the first half for New Bedford was Tom Simmons. He had a 16-yard carry on that drive, followed by a 15-yard carry, which brought New Bedford down to the two-yard line, where three plays later, Walsh ran it in from two yards out to give New Bedford the lead with 3.45 remaining in the first quarter. No other scoring the rest of the first half as New Bedford has a 7-0 lead heading into the second half now. And Zach also has a look at the halftime stats for us. Uh, it's, it, it's, it's, the total yards tells the story. New Bedford 165, Durfee 52 yards. Durfee having a little trouble getting their offense going. Pantoja is 0 for 2 for 0 yards passing. And Cedric Cavallo 15 carries for 39 yards. He did go over the 1,000-yard mark in the first half on the season for him. But other than that, he's really been shut down. He's only had one carry over 10 yards so far. Ryan Walsh 5 for 8 for 78 yards. He's not throwing the ball as much as he's liked, but when he is throwing the ball, he's throwing it well. And Tom Simmons, eight carries for 70 yards, and it, he should have over 100 yards. He did have one 32-yard carry, which was called back for holding penalty in the first half as well. New Bedford will receive the second half kickoff. And as we've mentioned to you several times today, just a wonderful day for football. Temperatures probably in the low 50s, my guess. I'll check in with Dave, the crack statistician here, see if he can be a crack weatherman, maybe get a temperature for us. Joe Cabral and Zach Rocha bringing you the traditional Thanksgiving Day matchup between New Bedford High School and Durfee High. The Hilltoppers about to kick off to start the second half. Up the second half is 99, Jeremy Raposo. Jeremy Raposo, number 99. Slightly bigger than a four-room condominium. He is big. Let's see what happens here. Ball is tumbling down towards Simmons at the 20-yard line. Tom picks it up on a bounce. Fumbles, and Durfee has recovered. 
Simmons was hit at about the 25 yard line and the ball came loose. Duffy with the recovery and I believe there was number 99 Raposo with the recovery. Duffy Hilltopper football at the New Bedford 31 yard line. You see the ball here tumbling down towards Simmons. He picks it up on a hop and then tries to go down the left sideline. He's grabbed by the shirt and then the ball just pops loose. He really wasn't hit. But in his effort to avoid that shirt tail tackle, he did fumble and Durfee with the recovery. It was Foley Alley who's played such a, good, a great job defensively for Durfee. We saw him break up a pass on the five yard line to Steve Yates in the first half and there he's the one who causes the fumble for Durfee. Durfee with a good opportunity now to score on the opening drive of the game, of the second Antola half. Antola with the give to Carvalho. Very short gain on the play, maybe about two to the 30 yard line. Durfee with their deepest possession in Whaler territory with the ball at the New Bedford 30-yard line after the Simmons fumble. Pantoja returning to the huddle after visiting with the Durfee coaching staff. Second and nine for the Hilltoppers. It's a Ruta to the left with number 20, Lopes in the slot. Now rolling to his left, it's Pantoja. Swing pass to Carvalho, off of his fingertips, incomplete. Second and, no, let's check that. Third and nine now for Durfee. It's a pivotal play right here. Durfee getting that fumble recovery on the opening kickoff of the second half. It's important that they can score on this drive and tie this ball game up. Get, these th get this game even with a whole second half more to play. There you see Zach. And I'm here as well, being referred to as the turkey by our producer, Mr. Bob Parati. That's the last time I say something nice about him. Oh, he's directing today. I hope he goes and directs some traffic out on Route 6. Pantoa, the quarterback, calling signals. The eye set. There's a fake to Carvalho, rolling, throws to his left. He has a man wide open. Matt Lopes with the ball. He has a touchdown. Matt Lopes down the left sideline. Pantoa completes his first pass of the day, and it's a big one. 20, check that, 31 yards in length. Angel Pantoa to Matt Lopes. And it really was just New Bedford. Somebody forgot to cover the man. That's all that happened there. Lopes had 20 yards with no one near him. He had just so much room for Pantoa to throw the ball. There's so much margin of error. Could have been committed there. It wasn't. And Durfee finds the end zone, ties this ball game up. New Bedford secondary is really going to get yelled at when they get back to the sideline. In to attempt the extra point for the Hilltoppers. It's Phil Medeiros. His kick is up. It's no good. He pulled it wide to the left. Plenty of leg by Medeiros, but the kick was no good. So New Bedford holds on to a one-point lead. Seven to six over Durfee. And let's take a look at the replay of that touchdown. Play action and Pantoja rolling to his left. Looks, fires long and deep down. As Zach mentioned, busted coverage by New Bedford as wide open Lopes behind the Whalers secondary with the reception at the five yard line and he walks in untouched for the Durfee touchdown. And it was on Tom Belastracci's side of the field, Tom Belastracci in his first game at cornerback. It appears as if he, he mixed, mixed up his coverage there and he was covering someone towards the middle of the field and thought Ryan Walsh would cover back deep, but Walsh obviously not uh, communicating with, with Belastracci on that play and Durfee gets a little bit closer to uh, taking the lead here. They trail 7-6 now. And busted coverage cost the Whalers against Brockton, Zach, when they should have been in a prevent defense. A and big play in that contest late in the game, giving Brockton the margin of victory. <laughs> and now this broken play, and Lopes with the touchdown reception. Durfee back in the game, trailing 7-6. to six. Raposo again to kick off for the Hilltoppers. Oh. Off the side of his foot, the kick will go out of bounds. And a flag 
will result on the play. Now the officials will meet with the Whalers, and they'll decide whether they want to take the ball where it went out of bounds, or have Durfee re-kick. I believe they're going to have Durfee re-kick. They will. Yeah, getting back to last week in the busted coverage, it was it was Ariston Aurora who, who had mixed up his coverage and not covered Justin Council, resulted in a 50-yard pass, and that allowed Brockton to take the touchdown and take the win 14-7 in New Bedford. That's why Aurora was moved to outside linebacker this week, and they had Tom Belastracci move the cornerback. Belastracci, uh, unfortunately, on that play, didn't do too much better than his uh, than tw number 21 Aurora. There was a receiver underneath Fort Durfee on the play, Zach. I don't know who it was, but it appeared as if the Whalers were confused and they covered the short man, leaving Lopes wide open, deep. I don't know if they thought Pantoja could not throw the ball that long. Now Raposo getting a large cheer from the Durfee fans as he booms the kick down. And here's Balistrachi down the left sideline. He's at the 40, a flag on the play, 30. The 20 yard line, Mark Balistrachi is brought down at the 10 but a bunch of flags being thrown. What an exciting return by Mark Balistrachi, but it will all be for naught, it appears. Yeah, when, when a referee is throwing a flag 30 yards down the field, you know he's seen something that's illegal, and it's usually on the offense in, in a special team situation like this on a kickoff, and that's gonna result in uh, bringing this ball back a long way from that 10 yard line. And regardless of the penalty, that's the way you return a kick. You take the ball, you look for a seam, and then you take it upfield. Mark Balastrachi with the best kickoff return we've seen all season. I mean, this but is, it's all for naught. Let's this is take really a look at it, Zach. The, the best chance Mark Balastrachi's had to return a kick all season, and he, he makes it count. He takes it right through, but I think it was Lee Chase right there with the illegal block. I couldn't really see as Dallas Smith continues to lead block for Balistrachi, but the flag had already been thrown by then. Mark just turning on the Jets and running that perfectly, as you said, Joe. Holding against New Bedford is declined. An illegal block in the back will be accepted. So the Whalers with a pair of penalties on the kick return. And I think Zach was correct in saying there was a block in the back, a push visible to you on the screen. And as a result, New Bedford is pushed back to their own 32-yard line. They had the ball down at about the 10 of the Hilltoppers on the kick return by Balistrachi. The broken eye to the left, and here's Walsh running the option. He'll keep it, turns into the secondary, puts his head down, and dives out to about the 40-yard line. Ryan Walsh does not try to avoid the tacklers. He tries to run them over every opportunity he gets. Fearless. That's, that's the word that comes to mind when you see Ryan Walsh come out of the pocket and start running that ball down the field. He goes after people instead of avoiding them or sliding. Just fearless. The eye set behind Ryan. There's the underneath handoff to Aurora. Ariston brought down at the 44, another flag on the play. Ariston is pointing to his face mask. A flag thrown in that vicinity usually means a hold, but it could have been a face mask because Ariston pointed to it, and that is the call. A five-yard face mask penalty against New Bedford, against Durfee, I should say, as one of the Hilltoppers latched onto the face mask of Ariston Aurora. First down for New Bedford. They're right at midfield. Eight minutes and 50 seconds left in the third quarter. They lead seven to six over Durfee. Joe Cabral and Zach Rocha with all of the high school football action on Thanksgiving Day from Mac Aldridge Field in Fall River. The eye set behind Walsh. The Balistrachi brothers to the right and the left. There is the gift to Simmons. He bounces it to the outside, 45 yard line. Tom, out of bounds at about the 42, it looks like, of Durfee. Let's see where they mark it officially. Now closer to the 44, actually, it looks like. 
second We've seen New Bedford run that counter play to Simmons all year long, and every single time it's accounted for positive yards. Again, there only counts for six yards, but on a first down carry, that's all you're looking for, five, six yards. Now they have a very makeable first down with second and four. Mark Balistrachi to the right. Tom is in the slot. Here's the option. Walsh with the ball. Pitch it to Simmons around the right side. Tom Simmons at the 40. Inside of the 40 of Durfee to about the 36-yard line. New Bedford determined to march the football on the ground. And they have another first down. Good drive being developed here by New Bedford, but we saw this in their opening drive of the first half. Eventually, New Bedford's offensive line faltered, and Durfee was able to make two consecutive sacks, push New Bedford back. The same thing happens again here. You can be rest assured Wayne Hamill will have an airflow for this offensive line. They really need to step up here and allow Walsh to have time to set up this offense and continue their methodical drive that they have going right now. Here's Walsh with a counter gift to Simmons. He's met right at the line of scrimmage. In fact, he might have lost the yard. Number five, Adam Emery with the tackle for Durfee. And number 54, Ryan Valois with the tackle. Well read by Durfee there, perfect penetration. On the handoff to Simmons, had nowhere to go except into a black and red defender. So New Bedford has second and 12, and like I said, the drive may be setting up here as Simmons gets the handoff there. Steve Yates and Louis Melendez try to block, but Simmons bounces right into Melendez, has nowhere to go. Here's the pitch to Aurora, the lone back. He takes it to the left side, Ariston, into the Durfee secondary across the 30-yard line. The Whalers running the quick pitch to Ariston, and he's inside the Durfee 30 to about the 29, it looks like. Third and about two. As again, we take a look at many of those in attendance here today at Mac Aldridge Field. The Durfee side of the field totally filled. New Bedford virtually filled as well. The fullback now is Ryan McCann. Counteraction, give it to Simmons off of right tackle. He will not get the first down. Very short gain, if any, for Tom Simmons. Matt Lopes with the tackle. Lopes blitz from his quarterback position. Nobody in, New in red and white picked him up. A nice job by the the senior defender to, to penetrate the defensive line they get in the backfield and now force fourth down in New Bedford. Fourth down for the Whalers. Let's see if they run the option. It's been the play that they've chosen when they need a first down. Here's the pitch instead to Simmons. He fumbles. He fumbles the toss. The Whalers trying to recover. Ariston Aurora has it back at the 45-yard line. Now trying to reverse the green. He breaks a pair of tackles at the 38. A flag again thrown on the play. Wow, a wild play. Walsh is pitched for Simmons. Went off of Tom's hands and to the turf. Ariston Aurora back to recover the ball. And then a wild run resulting in a loss in the play and then a pair of flags being thrown. Let's see what the call is. Illegal block in the back against New Bedford. The penalty will be declined, I would imagine. So Durfee will take over on downs. Several things going wrong there for New Bedford on that play. The pitch to Simmons, he can't get it. Aurora picks up, knowing it's third down, knowing he had to at least try to get the first down. He tries, but another illegal block in the back penalty on New Bedford. The, the offensive line faltering on that play, and penalties is, is, is what's killing the Whalers here today. If you take a look at the replay, there's the pitch to Simmons, bouncing off his face mask, and pummeling to the ground, lopes. Knocks Simmons down before he can grab the ball. Aurora then picks it up. And Aurora is going to avoid some defenders for a while here. He cuts it back. He's got five black shirts around him. He continues to run. There's the block in the back right there on Ryan Walsh, I believe, trying to come back. Here's Cavallo with the handoff for Durfee. He's brought down after a short gain on the play. He fumbles, but the ground cannot cause the fumble, and that's what happened. On the play brings up a second and nine. Gain of about a yard on the play for Carvalho. Number 22, Cedric Carvalho, a 5'10", 185-pound senior. Has been the main ball carrier here today for Durfee. 
in all season for Durfee, I mean, he, he went over 1,000 yards in the first half, but 17 carries for 43 yards is not a stat Steve Wynaski wants to see very often from his senior running back. There's the gift to Cavallo off left tackle. This time he slices into the Whalers secondary. Picks up about eight on the play and is brought down just short of the first down. At the Hilltopper 46 yard line. Third and short for Durfee. And they actually, the officials, want to measure, so they're calling out the chains. Five minutes and nine seconds left in the third quarter. New Bedford seven, Durfee six. The traditional Thanksgiving Day matchup, the 115th meeting between these two teams. We're meeting today at Mac Aldridge Field in Fall River. And it'll be third and about a foot Third and a foot for Durfee from their own 46-yard line. <laughs> Jeff is going to put eight men in the, excuse me, nine men in the box here and try and stop Cavallo, who you would assume is going to get the handoff on this play. Very important play for New Bedford. The eye set behind Pantoja. Quarterback sneak for Angel. Very short gain on the play. They didn't need much. So Pantoja. Moving forward, it appears just enough for a first down, but the officials want to call for the change once again. This is going to be close, but I think he, he might just have the nose end of the ball for a first down. Here come the chains with 446 left in the third quarter. The ball's on the 47-yard line of Durfee, and they have the first down. So Durfee keeps possession of the ball, and again, Steve Wynoski is going to tell his quarterback to try and maintain possession because they don't want this New Bedford high-flying offense to come back on the field and get a quick score. They want to try and contain for as long as they can and hold on to this ball. There's the gift to Cavallo. This time, straight up the gut. Brought down after a gain of one on the play. In on the stop for New Bedford, number 49, Ramsey Clark. Gain of one, second and nine for Carvalho and the Hilltoppers. Well, Clark at the big hit on the opening kickoff of the of the opening uh, kickoff of the whole game, I should say. And since then, we really haven't said his name a lot. Durfee's done a good job blocking the outside linebacker, who is considered one of the top linebackers in the area, if not the top linebacker in the area. Second and nine for Durfee. They have the ball at the 48-yard line. Running a wing tee. There's the underneath handoff to number 20, Lopes. He is brought down in the backfield, and that play has not worked today at all. Whenever they get up and they set up in that formation, New Bedford is always looking for that counter play. And Lopes is brought down immediately. In fact, he's brought down for a loss of about five on the play. That sets up a long third and 13. Yeah, Lopes has, has three carries for negative five yards today. As you said, they've tried it a few times, but it's just not working for them. They need to continue to go to Cavallo, uh, uh, try the uh, play action fake, and let Pantoja scramble and try and find an open receiver. That's the only way Durfee's going to be successful in the second half. Straight back is Pantoja, looking long and deep, firing. A pass, nearly intercepted by Mark Balistrachi, but through his hands, intended for Matt Lopes. And Durfee will be forced to punt with a fourth and 13. The ball went through the hands of Mark Balistrachi and nearly into the hands of Matt Lopes. That would have been heartbreaking if it would have happened, but fortunately it fell harmlessly to the turf. Still, that ball should, should have been intercepted by Balistrachi, no problem. It seems as if he took his eyes off the ball for just that split second, which allowed the ball to go through his hands and off his face mask instead of going into his chest so he could make the interception. 
Balistracci and Aurora back to return the kick. Mark will take this one, moving up on it at the 25-yard line. Across the 30 to the 35 goes Mark Balistracci. And New Bedford will have a first and 10 from their own 35. They lead 7-6 to six with 2.47 left in the third quarter. Joe Cabral and Zach Rocha bringing you Thanksgiving Day High School football action on New Bedford Cable Access Sports and Fall River Educational TV. There we see some of the young fans in attendance here today at Mac Aldridge Field. And I'm sure they're working up an appetite for a little bit later this afternoon when mom will be serving up some turkey. And there's a timeout on the field. Durfee with the timeout. They've had problems today getting the right players on the field on several occasions. Forced again to call a timeout. This time the first one in the second half. But those timeouts, especially in the second half, when they are really unnecessary, are very, very damaging when used early in that half. Yeah, Durfee, they, they called all five of their timeouts, and there was still eight minutes to go in the first half. So they need to, to get themselves together and not use these, these timeouts. As you said, Joe, you do not want to waste them, especially in the second half, where it becomes even more crucial. And we're in a tight ball game right here. New Bedford only leads 7-6. Each one is crucial. Wall straight back, looking, firing. Ball's deflected, but it's caught. Tom Balistracci with the reception on the deflected pass. He has a first down for New Bedford at the Durfee 46-yard line. First down for New Bedford. There is Tom Balistracci, six foot one inch, 170 pound junior. With a fine reception, good concentration there by Tom. 22 yards on the connection from Walsh to Balistracci. Now option left by Ryan. He'll keep it. Now pitch to Simmons down the sideline, but Tom is tripped up at about the 42-yard line of Durfee. Gain of about four, it looks like. Durfee's doing a good job right now, shutting down Simmons so far. He's got five carries for 19 yards. Compared to his first half stats of eight carries or 70 yards, Durfee's really shut him down pretty well in the second half. And that's why New Bedford has been kept off the scoreboard so far in these opening uh, 10 minutes of the second half. And if you notice, Zach, Mark Balistracci, again, not catching many balls here today. The devastating receiver that he can be, and they go for him this time. He has it. Complete first down inside the 30-yard line of Durfee. Good timing on my part as... The Whalers and Waltz decided to go right to Mark Balistracci. He has the completion and the first down at the 28-yard line. Let's look at it again. Walsh straight back, looking, firing. It looked like the ball was tipped again. No, not this time. Right into the hands, a well-thrown pass. Right to Mark Balistracci for the first down. The pass was a little wobbly, but it got the job done. That's all that matters in this game of football. There's Aurora on the handoff, straight up the middle into the Durfee secondary. He has another New Bedford first down. Inside the 20-yard line, down to about the 14 of Durfee goes Ariston Aurora. And now the Whalers with some fine play calling, mixing it up, using all of their weapons. And you can see Durfee somewhat confused. The last four plays, Simmons, Tom Balistracci, Mark Balistracci, and Ariston Aurora. Now Tom in motion. Ryan rolls to his left, looks back to Tom Balistracci. He has it at the 10, at the 5, close to the goal line. He is brought down at about the 3, it looks like. And again, the Whalers and offensive coordinator John Seed with some fine play calling here, Zach, mixing it up. And Durfee does not know where to look. That, that pass complete from Walsh to Tom Balistracci for another Durfee first down. This is the New Bedford. another Whaler first down. This is the New Bedford offense we saw the first seven weeks of the season. The New Bedford offense that was the leading team in the state in scoring. The New Bedford offense that was averaging over 28 points a game. It's coming out on this drive right here. Power ride to the right. Aurora over the top. <laughs> Durfee signaling as if they have a fumble recovery, but the officials say no. Second down. And that's the danger of trying to leap over the pack. The ball becomes very 
very much exposed. If a helmet lands on that football or on the player's arm as he leaps, he can fumble. Durfee thought they had a recovery, but the officials say no. Second down at about the one foot line, it looks like. It's Inside the one. It's very risky as well because you don't know if you're coming down on your knee or not and you're going to be declared dead. You may come down on somebody else. Quarterback sneak. Ryan Walsh trying to get in. And no signal, no call as of yet. No, he does not make it. Third down. Walsh with a sneak. Very little surge from the offensive line. And there is... The end of the third quarter of play. We'll switch ends of the field. New Bedford with a third and goal inside the one. Third and about six inches, it looks like. We'll see if they can punch it in. They have two downs to do so. I would not try anything wide. Just continue to push straight ahead. That's a true. score here really could be devastating to Durfee. As you remember the last time New Bedford got inside 10 yards, first and goal, four-yard line, Aurora tries getting in, he cannot, he stopped at the two. Next play, Aurora tries getting in again, he cannot, he stopped at the two. Then finally, Walsh does the QB sneak, gets in, and scores on third and goal. New Bedford has third and goal again here on the one-yard line, and maybe even inside the one-yard line. So expect the same type of thing, and we may see another Walsh QB sneak, or just have Aurora pile it up the middle with... Uh, both Ryan McCann and Ramsey Clark blocking in that power eye formation New Bedford implemented a few weeks ago and works pretty well for them on these third and short situations and first and goal line situations. 11 minutes of football remaining here on Thanksgiving Day from Mac Aldridge Field in Fall River. New Bedford leading Durfee 7-6. to six. The Whalers with the ball just inches, inches shy of the goal line. They have a third and goal from that point. New Bedford with a power eye set behind senior quarterback Ryan Walsh. Power eye offset to the right. Aurora is the tailback. There is the gift to Ariston, and he's into the end zone off of right tackle for the touchdown. Officially, it will be a one-yard touchdown run for Ariston Aurora behind the blocks of Ramsey Clark and Ryan McCann, and New Bedford goes up 13-6. to six. And Ariston Aurora, he began the season as the number one running back for New Bedford, got shifted to the fullback position, never complained, did his job, one of the best fullbacks in the area, comes out today finally, and he gets the touchdown carry as they use him at both the running back and fullback positions. Just a selfless kid who deserves to have the success he's had this year. The kick is up and good. A very important extra point off of the toe of Andrew Correa. And New Bedford ups their lead to 14 to six as we take a look at the touchdown run by Ariston Aurora. Here is the touchdown run. You saw the turkey go across the screen. Into the end zone goes Ariston. Behind the blocks of Clark and McCann. And New Bedford with a 14 to 6 lead. I don't know if our viewers have been able to catch the touchdown turkey flying across the bottom of the screen. We've actually timed him and he's running a 4 4 40. There he was he's again. So fast. <laughs> he's so fast. You blink, you miss him. And I think he's uh, the cousin of the road runner. Welcome 21, Brock and 13, 14. And I don't think he'll be caught on this Thanksgiving Day. No, and that. Uh, we have a score from Brockton. We do have a score from Brockton. Waltham has just scored at the beginning of the fourth quarter, and they have a 21-13 lead. So things are looking on the up and up to call it for New Bedford right now. The Whalers, with 10:57 left in this contest, leading 14 to six, and with a kickoff, Eldridge kick returned by number 20, Lopes to the 25-yard line. Remember, Durfee has to win today. So with New Bedford ahead 14 to six, even if Durfee were to score a touchdown and get a two-point conversion and tie it at 14, and Waltham 
did continue to hold on against Brockton, New Bedford would be the team to go on in advance. And that, that goes back to the point differential in which New Bedford is averaging over 20 points a game while allowing only 13 points a game. Durfee has actually been outscored on average by 14 to 15. So that's why New Bedford would, would go on to the playoffs with the tie because they would have the tiebreaker because of the point differential. Well, we can't forget that there is overtime here in the Big Three, so that becomes a moot point. That's 22, Cedric Cavallo on the carry. Here's the give to Carvalho off a right tackle. Calvin Arterbury in on the tackle for the Whalers. The first time we've called his name here this morning. Gain of three on the play for Carvalho. Second and seven for the Durfee Hilltoppers. From their own 28, let's call it. Fourth quarter action from Mac Aldridge Field. New Bedford 14, Durfee 6. The eye set behind Pantoja. Play action. Back to pass. Looking, firing, long and deep. The ball is intended for number 21, Aruda. Falls to the turf harmlessly. And that'll set up a third down and seven for Brockton. Now the timing seemed to be off on that play. Pantoa was pressured by Steve Yates and 20 Retentes in the backfield and he had to release a few seconds earlier than he wanted to. Didn't match up with Aruda's uh, uh, timing on, on his uh, route and that's why the ball landed in front of him instead of in, fr in, uh, in his hands. 9.58 left in this fourth quarter. The eye set behind Pantoja. Call signals, drop straight back. Whalers with the pressure, screen pass. Intercepted! The ball was intended for Carvalho, but he had fallen to the turf, and Ariston Aurora comes up with the interception for the Whalers. They'll have the ball at the 25-yard line. Ariston Aurora coming out of absolutely nowhere to make that interception, coming up from his outside linebacker position the first time this season he's played that position after losing his cornerback spot last week, and he comes out of nowhere to make this interception as Carvalho had, as you said, there it is. Pantoa drops back, it's a screen play. New Bedford's gonna get some pressure on Pantoa, not much though as he throws it over. Cavallo's already fallen on the ground, he tripped up, and Aurora allow that allows Aurora to come in there and make the interception. Big play from New Bedford. Walsh back to pass, looking for the big one, down the middle, touchdown! Mark Palastracci with the reception, and then dancing into the end zone from 25 yards out, the Whalers connect on one play, and they've upped their lead to 20 to six. Perfect throw by Mark Dahlstrach, his fourth catch of the ball game. It's his longest one, 25 yard TD catch. He leads the team in scoring with nine touchdowns on the season now. And you said earlier in the second half, Joe, that we hadn't called his name a lot. Things have changed. Walsh going to his favorite receiver, Mark Balistracci. He has a touchdown. The kick by Eldridge hits the crossbar and falls over. Correction, it was Andrew Correa, but his kick hit the crossbar and just tumbled over. And New Bedford has a 21-6 lead, and that was kind of interesting. Things are certainly going New Bedford's way right now. You got Cavallo falls down on the screen pass that allows Aurora to make the interception. No more than 20 seconds later, Walsh throws a 25-yard touchdown pass to Mark Balistracci across the middle. He scores, and then Andrew Correa, the ball hits the crossbar and goes over to give New Bedford the 21-6 lead with the point after the touchdown. Everything going the Wales way. Momentum has certainly shifted here. Quite different than what we saw during their game against Brockton when things seemed to go against them virtually everything going against the Whalers. That's one of the most unique extra point conversions I've ever seen. Hits the crossbar, virtually dances there for a second, then tumbles over. And New Bedford with a 20 to six lead, 21 six lead. Andrew Eldridge with a kickoff for the Whalers. And there is Lopes with the ball at the 50. Now the 20, 25 yard line to the right sideline. Close to the 30 goes Matt Lopes. Hit down on the play by Dallas Smith and number 21, Ariston Aurora. And now Durfee will have to put the ball in the air, it would appear. Down by 15 points with nine and a half left in the contest. Yeah, how will Durfee react after giving up the interception and the touchdown? 
uh, they're going to come out with the pass. They're going to come out with a run and then try an onside kick later on after a long drive. be very interesting to see what Durfee does here. I would expect Pantoa to go to the air. He's been somewhat successful in the second half. He's got uh, one completion for 31 yards, but uh, his other passes have been, been pretty much on the mark. The I set behind Angel Pantoja. Play action now rolling to his left. Being chased by Yates, avoids a tackle. Now throwing long and deep. He has a man open. Matt Lopes has the ball inside the 25-yard line of the Whalers. But there is a flag on the play. I believe Pantoja was beyond the line of scrimmage when he let that pass go. That, that's crushing right there for Durfee. Take back almost 50 yards on that play of Pantoa, if that is the call. Yeah, Pantoa really had to run for his life there. Steve Yates was in hot pursuit. And indeed, Pantoa was just a yard past the line of scrimmage when he tossed that ball. Very lucky play for New Bedford and a very crushing blow for Durfee. The momentum carries even further onto New Bedford's side. The penalty to be marked off against the Hilltoppers negating the 53-yard connection from Pantoja to Matt Lopes. Loss of down in addition to the five-yard penalty. So that'll set up a second and 15 for Durfee. Second down from the 25-yard line. The eye set behind Angel Pantoja. Back to pass. Looking for his wide receiver, number 21, Jeff Aruda. The pass falling to the turf harmlessly in front of Aruda. That'll set up a third and 15. It was a good blitz there by New Bedford's defense. Again, it was the linebackers, Clark and uh, Arterbury, that got the pressure on Pantoa, who only was allowed two steps there and really couldn't even look at his receiver before having to fire it. That's why the ball fell short, and that's why Durfee has a very pivotal third and 15 here. They are in trouble in making a comeback in this ball game. Third and 15 for the Hilltoppers. 9.07 left in this contest. New Bedford with a 21 to six lead. Back to pass, it is Pantoja looking, firing. His pass down the sideline intended for Lopes is picked off by Mark Balistrachi. He has it at the Durfee 40, now the 30, 25 yard line, 20. Down the sideline, Mark Balistrachi touchdown! Mark Balistrachi down the left sideline, 45 yards on the interception return. And the Durfee side of the field is starting to empty very quickly. Fans heading home for Thanksgiving Day dinner as they think it's virtually impossible for the Hilltoppers to recover. Here we see the interception by Balistrachi. It was a perfect spiral, except it went to the wrong man. Lopes, it was well under overthrown for Lopes, and Balistrachi makes the interception. He's going to have some help from his blocker there, and he's got plenty of daylight to run as he takes it to the house and gives New Bedford this 27-6 lead. Some fine camera work there by the New Bedford Cable Access camera staff. Here's Korea's extra point attempt. This one is good. Well beyond the crossbar this time. And New Bedford has a 28 to six lead. And New things changing so quickly, Zach. Oh, things have changed quite, quite dramatically and it's 21 points in the last two minutes and six seconds New Bedford has scored. That, that's the, that's the the telling stat of the game, New Bedford has started off this fourth quarter scoring 21 points in under 130 seconds. 130 seconds. Just, o Amazing. just over two can, minutes. Then you can count that high with your shoes on. <laughs> and on a Thursday morning, no, no less. 28 to six, the Whalers with the lead on Thanksgiving Day. In the traditional matchup, versus the Durfee Hilltoppers. The 115th meeting between the two teams. Joe Cabral and Zach Rocha bringing you the action from Mac Aldridge Field on New Bedford Cable Access Sports and 
Fall River Educational Television. Andrew Eldridge to kick off for New Bedford, taken there by Carvalho at the 25. Now to his right, still at the 25, 30, 35 yard line. Eric Carvalho still on his feet. Finally brought down at the 38 yard line of the Hilltoppers. There's still some fight left in Durfee, as you could tell from that play by Cavallo, not wanting to go down there, looking for any type of hole he could find in order to try and get through New Bedford's defense and try and penetrate somewhat. He could not find that hole, though. And so Durfee takes over on the 38-yard line, and they need 22 points in order to tie this ball game up. And they only have 8 minutes and 36 seconds to do it with Joe. Things may be, may be over for the Hilltoppers. He's looking bleak for Durfee. But there is still lots of time. They just need to score quickly. The eye set behind Pantoja. There is the gift to Carvalho. Left tackle, Carvalho. Now at midfield, right down the middle of the field, crossing the Whaler 40-yard line to the 38 of New Bedford. Sometimes when the opposition is looking for the pass, the run play is a better option. There, a big game for Carvalho and Durfee, their biggest run play of the day. It's only 15 carries for, on five, no, excuse me, five carries for 15 yards before that 32-yard play by Cavallo and New Bedford's defense. They shut down Durfee and then they let up a big play. Hopefully they can, can, can contain that in these last few minutes of the ball game. Cavallo in motion, he takes the handoff to the 35-yard line of New Bedford. Short gain on the play. Picks up about three. The play before, a gain of 24 yards for Carvalho. As I mentioned, his biggest run of the day. Setting up the Hilltoppers on the New Bedford side of the field. Clock running down, seven minutes and 37 seconds left. Durfee needing to strike quickly if they hope to get back into this contest, trailing 28 to six. I'm surprised they're not even running the hurry up offense. They're going to the huddle in between plays. That's killing at least 20 seconds per play. They need every single second they can get right now. There's a give off of left tackle to Carvalho. Hammered down by Andy Souza at the 30 yard line. Third and three for the Hilltoppers, but they're taking way too much time. Pantoja from the sideline returning to the huddle. It appears that Steve Wynarski is telling Pantoja each play to call. I would personally let the senior quarterback do what he wants to do out there because, as I said, you need every single second out there when you trail by 22 points in the fourth quarter. There is the give to Carvalho, this time off of right tackle. He has a first down. Gain of about seven for Eric Carvalho. Cavallo's not moving though, and this would be just the, the ultimate uh, injury to insult for Durfee right now. The top player in your team going down, and you're trailing by 22 points trying to get back in the ball game. He is down after that run, gain of about seven. Into the huddle for Durfee, number 34, Steve Pedro to replace Cedric Carvalho. And there we see the Durfee training staff. Wow. Waltham, 34, Brockton, 13. Right now is looking good for the Whalers. Five minutes remaining in that contest. New Bedford leading 28 to six. Brockton trailing 34-13. As we painted the scenario for you prior to the contest, if these two scores were to hold, New Bedford would advance and actually have a game next Tuesday, I believe, Zach. I'm, I'm pretty sure, yeah, it would be next Tuesday. And, and, and Dave was telling us, our crack statistician before, that the St. John's Zavarian game was pretty well evenly matched as of the uh, last score we had. It was Zavarian in, in favor, 21-14. Pantoja back to pass, looking, firing, has a man open, caught there by Jeff Arruda. Down close to the five yard line is, Caru is, is Arruda. 
6-16 left in this game. There we see the score update. Fourth quarter, Waltham 34, Brockton 13. We see the Durfee fans. Quite a few less on hand following the Balistrachi interception return for a touchdown. But Durfee with the ball at the five yard line. Actually, it's about the seven. Hard to tell from this angle. In motion, it's Carvalho. There is the give to, oh, check that. It's Lopes, the slot man. And Lopes is brought down for a loss on the play. Every time they've run that play with Matt Lopes, Durfee has seen negative yardage as a result. Loss of eight. Back to the 15-yard line. Not a good play there for Durfee. Four carries, negative 13 yards for Lopes, Joe. That's exactly right. They get negative yardage every single time they run that play. And, and New Bedford seems to, to have their number on each one of those plays. Did, did you see the swipe Ramsey Clark took at the ball on that play? He almost chopped his head off as he was trying to go for the ball. That would have been even more crushing for Durfee as time continues to tick off the clock on them. We're at five minutes exactly remaining. Under five minutes now. And Durfee calls a timeout. A timeout they really needed to save, but they've used one. I believe that's their second of the second half. <laughs> New Bedford 28, Durfee 6, the 115th meeting between the Hilltoppers and the Whalers, formerly known as the Crimson. Did you know that, Zach? I did not know that. The Whalers were known, New Bedford High was known as the Crimson. I was only two years old when they had the 100th meeting, Joe, so no, I don't even go back that far. I think you're dating yourself. I wouldn't be doing that. <laughs> Unfortunately, I've been called a turkey. Now I've dated myself, so I'm just an old turkey. On Thanksgiving Day, fortunately, I've survived all of these years. I'm not that old, really, but they were called the Crimson back even in the 60s, I believe. I don't know exactly when the name change took effect. Pantoja back to pass, looking, firing, ball deflected, intended for the tight end. Number 30, Jamal Green. Incomplete. I think Arterbury is the one who got a hand up on that one. Calvin comes up with the big plays every, every so often, and he gets the sack. Uh, he, had a, he had a string of actually four straight games with at least one sack, and right there he knocks down the, uh, the uh, ball there, and, and, and the wide receiver was, was pretty wide open, so that was a big play from Arterbury. It keeps Durfee out of the end zone for a little bit longer. Yeah, you see some of the young ladies in attendance in the stands today, and I'll just clue you in. We have all male cameramen, so... That's why they focus in on the young high school ladies in attendance here today. Back to pass, Bantoa tries to avoid the sack, is, un is unable to do so. This time, number 57, Tony Vertentes, with the sack for New Bedford. As we saw Pantoja escape. Ryan McCann, I believe it was for New Bedford. No, there's only one unhappy man on New Bedford's roster, and that's Mark Rossi. He was the man who originally got the got the grab of Pantoa's shirt. He just could not bring him down, though. He's a little he looks a little frustrated that that his teammate Vertentes makes the sack instead of him. So Tony Vertentes <laughs> with the sack. Fourth and twenty-eight for the Hilltoppers. With the ball way back at their twenty-nine yard line. Desperate situation for Durfee. Back to pass, Pantoja firing long and deep. The ball will be nearly intercepted right through the hands of Tom Balistrachi. Incomplete, intended for Aruda. New Bedford will take over on downs at their own 29-yard line, I believe. No, check that. The ball is actually being spotted at about the 28. And more Durfee fans heading to the exits. 3.59 left here. New Bedford with the ball at their own 28. And they lead 28 to 6. See all the seniors getting in there for New Bedford now. Corey Drafen and Guido Cucci lining up at wide receiver. And Kevin Clapp is in the offensive line, as well as John DeBrito at the third wide receiver for New Bedford. 
John DeBrito in the slot. Walsh with the option, keeps it, takes it to the 30-yard line. Gain of two for Ryan. When I spoke to Coach Wayne Hamlet prior to the contest, he mentioned that for 17 of his 22 starters, this could be their last football game. But doesn't it looks pretty good. Yeah, it doesn't appear as it will be. Yeah. From what I understand from our crack statistician, David Rodericks, that, that, that their next playoff game would actually be played at home. It is a home game. We know that for sure. I'm not sure if we know the I opponent yet. Radio, I, I mean, it, it's just really surprising because New Bedford, they, they're not going to win the big three, despite the fact they'll probably win this ball game. They're not going to win the big three. Brockton has already won that. But Brockton, with the loss to Waltham, will not finish above 500. One of the prime qualifications to make it to that postseason. New Bedford will finish at over 500, 7 and 4. And so they will be the ones making the trip to the postseason. And I believe they'll be taking on Bridgewater Raynham. That'll be a tough one. Across the 30 yard line goes the fullback, Ariston Aurora, short game. Of the one common opponent I know between Bridgewater Raynham and New Bedford, it's BC High. And uh, Bridgewater Raynham beat BC High 21 to 7 the week before New Bedford made their fourth quarter comeback and defeated the Eagles 29 19 up at BC High. So that's the one common opponent I know of. So th that, that could actually be a pretty well uh, evenly matched ball game if uh, Waltham can hold on for that victory over Brockton and New Bedford can hold on for their victory over Durfee here. Durfee has called the timeout with 321 left. Ball on the 30 yard line for New Bedford. Actually, it's at about the 31 now. So third and a short seven for New Bedford. They'll go to the sideline to meet with head coach Wayne Hamlet and his staff. But it looks pretty good for New Bedford. Leading by 22 points with only 321 left. And at Brockton, the last time we had heard, Waltham thumping the boxers 34-13. Hopefully we'll have the final from Brockton prior to this game ending. And if the Whalers do advance and have a playoff game, go on to face Bridgewater Raynham on Tuesday night, we'll have that contest. We thought our broadcasting season was over. Well, basketball was upcoming for me. I know you have to play, but I will announce. So I had another season to look forward to. But for football, there is still more to come. The eye set. There is the gift to the tailback off of right tackle for New Bedford. Number 40, James Ewell. Very short gain on the play. That was Paul Rosario taking his first snap from center on the season for New Bedford. We usually see Tom Balistrachi come in there in the backup quarterback uh, role, but you don't want to have any injuries heading into what looks like a postseason trip for the Whalers now, so you put your star player on the sideline. New Bedford will be forced to punt, but they could care less at this point. I believe another timeout called by Durfee. 3.08 left. 28 to 6, the Whalers in the lead. Ryan Walsh back to punt for New Bedford. I mean, when you look at this from Durfee's standpoint, they still have to think of themselves as overachievers this year to even come this far and have a chance at making it to the postseason after losing every single one of their offensive and defensive starters last year. It's just a testament to, to these kids who really had no prior experience coming into the season. Short kick by Walsh. Going out of bounds at the 48-yard line of the Hilltoppers. Durfee will have the ball 52 yards away from the goal line, but more importantly, 22 points down with only three minutes left. New Bedford 28, Durfee 6. The 115th matchup between the two rivals. 
look for Durfee to hold up anything at all here. Look for Pantoa to throw as much as he can. These are the last 180 seconds of his career and uh, some of his other senior classmates. So Durfee's still going to go all out and try and see if they can get, find the end zone one more time before these kids graduate. And Toha straight back, looking, firing, again long and deep, down to Lopes at the sideline. He nearly took the ball right out of the hands of Mark Balistracci, who was in a prevent defense looking to play like a center fielder and just make the basket catch. But Lopes nearly cut in front and made the interception, and uh, made the reception. There you see the secondary from New Bedford that's played so well today. Mark Bellastracci, Ryan Walsh, and Tom Bellastracci. Tom Bellastracci and Ryan Walsh, they fell asleep on one play, but other than that, it was Mark Bellastracci with the interception with that made it 28-6. Here you see the replay. Pantoa drops back. Mark Rossi putting pressure up there with his hand. Pantoa, Pantoa throws it up there, and then Bellastracci and Lopes are going to go for it. Bellastracci just stands there lackadaisical as Lopes attempts to make the catch but cannot. Second and 10 for Durfee from the 48-yard line. Running the option is Pantoa looking. Now going behind Carvalho, taking it down the sideline. Pantoa is hammered out of bounds at the 40-yard line of New Bedford. A first down for the Hilltoppers, but the clock is running. So it's actually stopped, so he must have gone out of bounds. 2.41 left in the game. Well, Zach, what do you do for Thanksgiving Day dinner? I eat it. You eat but, it? Uh, you don't do any work, right? I don't do any work. Do you at least take out I, the trash after I when your mom's done? I can't cook. Are you kidding me? I can barely, I can barely function at 10 o'clock in the morning to broadcast a football game, never mind cook a full-course turkey dinner. Okay. So Zach's going to do some eating and nothing else. Maybe watch some football. Back to pass, Pantoja looking, firing. As a man, the pass is complete to Aruda at the New Bedford 28-yard line. First down, Durfee taking advantage of the fact that the clock stops while the chains are being moved. Trying to get quickly to the line of scrimmage. Actually, to the huddle, Pantoja with the play call from Coach Steve Winarski. And that's what's really killed Durfee in their attempt to come back in this fourth quarter is that Pantoa gets every single call from Winarski. He's not, he's not able to make the calls himself, and that kills those extra 20 seconds in between each play. In motion, Lopes, Pantoja, play action, looking. Fires, a ball overthrown, and a hard hit by Mark Balastracci on Jeff Gregory. A hard hit by Balistracci on Gregory and a flag on the play. And I think Balistracci is going to be flagged. And frankly, it was a hard hit, but I don't know why. It was a clean hit. The ball was intended for Gregory. He wasn't hit that late. He was just he was just drilled by Balistracci, but the ball was overthrown. It was somewhat in his area. So no mercy mark is what we may call him from now on. Not, not allowing Gregory to even think about catching that ball. Hit off his hands and then Belastracci hit him right to the ground. Gregory's still having trouble moving right now. And actually, I think the flag is... There was a flag on Durfee as Durfee. well. I think it was a sportsmanlike conduct. And there, there it is in slow motion. Gregory drops the ball and then he drops to the ground. Belastracci hits him right in the chest. We've seen Mark do that a few times this year. And he, he's just absolutely laid out kids. Just uses a 6'185 pound frame to the best of his advantage. It's a nightmare for a receiver to go into a secondary with a hard hitter like Mark Balistracci. And there we see him having, we saw Gregory having to extend himself and expose those ribs. When he did, he was drilled by Mark Balistracci. 139 remaining in the game. Second down. Back at the 43 yard line. The penalty was against Durfee for unsportsmanlike conduct. Apparently someone unhappy with the Balistracci hit. So 15 yards against Durfee. The Hilltoppers again with a give to Lopes on that counterplay. And Matt Lopes is drilled after a short game. 
He crosses the 45 yard line to about the 44. Another flag on the play. Let's see who this call is against. Late flag usually means unsportsmanlike conduct or something of that nature. And it, it may be on both teams, it may be on just one. We'll see. Again, oh, we see offsetting penalties, unsportsmanlike conduct on both teams. Offsetting penalties. There will still be third down. The clock continues to run. A minute and 23 left, or it should start to run as soon as the officials signal for it to do so. There he says, yes, run the clock. See, Fred Pimentel, the defensive coordinator for New Bedford, the lineman coach, is just soaked with the Gatorade across the field by the New Bedford Whalers defense. The starters are on the sideline. They're having a little bit of fun. Yeah, Coach Wayne Hamlet is nowhere to be seen. <laughs> you see, he's kind of hiding in between his coaching staff right now. It's not that cold today, but if you can take a Gatorade bath, it'll seem a lot colder. Another hard hit, this time for New Bedford. Raheem McDaniel getting in there, 5'10", 165-pound senior. We usually don't see him on the field too often, but he makes an impact on that play, cutting down Pantoa. Nice play by McDaniel. The Whalers with wholesale changes on defense. We see number 28, Jeremiah Andino in there. Number 17, Paul Rosario is now the safety. Number 31, Luke Manley in the contest. Fourth down for Durfee. Fourth and forever. There's a give to the fullback. Rigo for very short yardage, if any at all. And the Whalers will take over on downs after the handoff to Scott Rigo. 16 seconds left now in the game. New Bedford with a 28 to six lead. And they will win on Thanksgiving Day. They had won 16 in a row prior to last year. And they try to start a new streak here today with one in a row and a very important win because Waltham is defeating Brockton and if that score holds up it would be hard to imagine that it wouldn't. New Bedford will advance and take on Bridgewater Raynham it appears next Tuesday night. And it, it just looks, seems like vintage New Bedford out there as we said there was two turning points in the season for the Whalers. The fourth quarter against BC High they won 29-19 went on a five game winning streak. Then they lost to St. John's Prep and they won on a three-game losing streak. And it looks like we may have our third starting point of the season here. New Bedford winning 28-6, to advancing to the postseason. And they may make some noise in that postseason. We've seen them play hard with some of the top teams in the state. Paul Rosario taking the snap for the Whalers and taking a knee. And the clock has run down to zeros. And New Bedford is a winner on Thanksgiving Day. The Whalers, 28. The Hilltoppers, 6. New Bedford apparently on their way to advance and continue on with football for the 2001 season as they advance to the postseason. A big win today for New Bedford, and it worked out exactly as they had prescribed, exactly as they had hoped. Winning today, while again, apparently, we still haven't gotten the final score, Waltham knocks off Brockton.